next couple of weeks is she gave us 70 and now she's giving us 40 tomorrow again. So uh, a few announcements. Uh, college care packages will be packed up on Wednesday this week at Kim Messina's home. Do we have a time? I didn't get a time. 6.30. So please get your snacks for the college students to Kim's house by Wednesday packing it. 6.30. Uh, backpack is this week, Thursday, 4.30 here. They'll be packing for the backpack, and then 10 o'clock on Friday, they will be delivering. Softball is back. I don't know if we're, they're going to be practicing today at 5. Uh, a little rainy, but softball is back, um, so please, if you are interested, um, join the softball uh, team. Um, do we know if it's officially canceled for today, or anyone who's, who's no? Well, is Jamie here? She is not. It's supposed to be 5 o'clock at Tiger Town. I would assume that there is no practice with the radar. Uh, there will be a SPRC meeting next Sunday, April 22nd, following the worship service. Next, no, not next Saturday. Saturday, April 29th, recreation will be here. Uh, this will be Gabrielle's last, perform, last time to see her perform, correct? Um, so they will be here. They will also lead our service on April 29th in the morning. And then that evening, April 29th, will be the uh, potluck and firmly grounded service um, starting at 530. So April 28th, 29th, great. Um, come see recreation. See them lead our service. Then come see. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. So as Ryan said, we do have our praise service next Sunday. Uh, and next Sunday, uh, I just wanted to let you know, um, our theme uh, was inspired by our very own Pastor Matt uh, when he did his um, sermon series a few weeks back about controversies and uh, different controversial issues within our faith and everything. Uh, but that the bottom line of everything was that uh, though we're all different, we're all united. So our uh, theme for the praise service will be unity. We have a lot of cool songs that kind of highlight that. Um, so please come out uh, and uh, support us and, and worship with us that evening. Good morning. Next Sunday, um, the children are going to sing some songs. We were studying Moses from January to uh, March, and they have some really awesome songs. So we're going to do that next Sunday. In addition, next Sunday, I have invited the preschool families to have their kids here and sing some songs that the preschool has been doing. So um, if you can come next Sunday and support that and and. Uh, support the kids, that'd be great. Also, since the garage sale is over, um, we are really going to start hitting the VBS stuff. So if you have not yet signed up for VBS, please do so. The sign-up sheets are out there. Um, we w I do not have the Shepherd sign-up yet, but I will get those up there this week, as well as I need to um, work on that roster for those of you who Shepherd and teach in Sunday school. Um, if you have not yet signed up for that, please consider doing so. A couple of our folks need to move on. We have one student, one, one helper who does that who is going into recreation, so I need to replace a couple people. So prayerfully consider um, if you can help in the children's ministry, and thank you for all you do for the kids here, because you are amazing. Uh, youth group next Sunday night on the 22nd at 7 o'clock. There's going to be an ASP meeting for those who are going to ASP. So youth groups at 5.30 tonight, each Sunday night. There's youth group tonight at 5.30. Next Sunday night at 7 o'clock when youth group is over. If you are um, someone that's uh, helping with ASP or going to ASP, we're going to have a meeting next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Now the royal family would like to make an announcement. Hope Shar's glasses work for me because I forgot mine. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, we had lots of them there. I should have got a pair. Anyway, the royal family, Prince Jack, Princess Lynn, and I want to thank you all for all the work, all the support, all the love. You all worked unbelievably believably hard and long hours. God bless you all. Okay.
Jack and I would like to thank everyone for all the help before, during, and after the sale. And I know Mary's going to repeat some of these things, but we would especially like to thank Mary. She's the creator of the sale and has run it from day one every year. She is truly an inspiration, and I would like to invite everyone to join us next year for more laughter, fellowship, food, fun, and to everyone who helped this year, you are amazing. Same time next year. <laughs> okay. I couldn't do the sale without these two. I just couldn't do it. They are phenomenal. And as for me, the old gray mare ain't what she used to be. <laughs> I not only don't have a strong back, I have a weak mind. I do. They and all of you are what makes this sale such a great success. It's backbreaking work for 12 hours a day, but the fellowship is what keeps us wanting to do it for 35 years. This was our 35th. Um, and most of us are 70, in our 70s and 80s. Not me, I'm 39. <laughs> Unless, um, I thank God that Jack and Lynn are young. And unless they go on a worldwide cruise next April, and I lose what little bit of mind I have left, we will do it again next year. We, we had a lot of kids come and help this year that I taught 20 years ago. They all said they loved the sale when they were kids, and they still do. And two of those kids who were here this year are policemen, and they are Mackenzie Sturgeon and Chris Connolly. Is it, are they here? I see Mackenzie. Stand up, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mackenzie. You were such a help. Um, so I told them, oh, 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 yeah, when I taught them, they were really well behaved, really, really well behaved. So I, I would reward them with candy. And they, they were so sweet. But now I tell you, because I rewarded you with candy, and now you're a grown-up cop, we have something for you. <laughs> Donuts. When you need a cop, they're either at the donut shop or they're here working on the garage sale. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and speaking of kids, every year we have a rookie of the year. It's somebody who's never worked a sale before, but works many, many, many hours. And this year we have two rookies. And when I say your names, please stand. They are George and Eileen Beck. Where are you? They were phenomenal. You didn't even have to tell them what to do. They just saw what needed done, and they went and did it. So thank you so much, you, you kids. We love you. Okay. And we do have a strict rule. I can't reward you monetarily the rookies, but I am going to ask your parents to give you a raise in your allowance. <laughs> so God bless every one of you who helped, and the icing on the cake is we made
Thank you. Thank you. We probably would have made a little bit more, but there was one thing we couldn't sell. Let me show you what it was. It's still for sale if anybody wants. God bless you all and thank you. Are there any more announcements this morning? Hi everyone. So most of you know, I have taken over the last couple years of softball since Doug stepped down. It's very big shoes to fill, but I'm trying. So um, we were supposed to have a practice today at five, but it's raining really bad. So it's supposed to all day. So that will probably be canceled. Um, I'd like to do one next week if weather is available. I still don't have a schedule. I'm waiting on Al, so um, as soon as I get that, I'll let you guys know. However, I'm still waiting on responses from a lot of people if they're going to play. And we need new people. I know we have a lot of youth group, and there's not really a lot of youth that's on the team the past couple of years. I know the Darrens play, um, but other than that, I really don't have many. So if anybody wants to play... Anybody wants to join? Um, is Mike here? Mike? No, Mike isn't here. Okay, well, I'll tell you a quick story. Mike, he came and joined a couple years ago, and we thought, oh, my gosh, he is so great. We love him. And then he asked if he could bring a friend from another church to play with us. And we thought, well, who could be better than Mike? Then Drew came. And Drew is... He's one of our top players, and he is, he's just great. So if anybody even knows anybody that wants to play that's from another church and they don't have a softball team or one of your friends that would like to play, please just you know let us know. We have a good time. It's fun. And uh, we play not all summer, but most of the summer. And you guys can contact me. My number should be in the bulletin. Thank you. Flowers on the altar are given by Wayne and Char Stifler in celebration of Leo and Phyllis's Breddy's 59th anniversary. At this time, if you stand and greet one another. Friends, I invite you to remain standing if you're able as you return to your places this morning. Please remain standing if you're able as you return to your places. And our opening song this morning is Here I Am to Worship. Let's join together.
you pray with me, please? Lord God, that is why we're here today. As you know, we gather in this place to worship you. Just turn away from the world for just a little while and all its craziness and its hectic schedule and all the pressures and the concerns and the burdens and the worries of this world. To gather in this place, a sanctuary from the world outside. Center ourselves upon you for just a little while and worship you and be filled by your spirit so that you can flow out from us again when we leave this place that we can be filled with you to face life and help others face it as well. This morning, Lord, fill us as we worship you. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated.
Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come join for the children's time, please. Yes, I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Okay, we still have a few more coming up. We'll wait just a second. Anybody else coming up? Okay, you got to be more enthusiastic than the adults. When I say good morning, you say good morning. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. The adults are more enthusiastic than that. <laughs> what happened? Try again. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. I don't think you're very enthusiastic. All this rain or something. I don't know. Maybe you guys are tired from the garage sale, too. I don't know. But... I'm going to tell you this morning, something this morning. I'm talking this morning with the adults about changing our minds. Changing our minds. Have you ever changed your mind before about something? Give me an example of some time you changed your mind. What's that? I didn't hear you, buddy. Give me an example of some time you changed your mind. Any idea? So you were going to play your video game, but you changed your mind. Oh, with your brother. Okay, excellent. Okay, so sometimes people say, this is an expression that some people were, were Janelle and I grew up with, the weather changes its mind a lot. Okay? Did you ever hear that before? Not everybody says that. Some places in the country, though, they say that. As if the weather has a mind and it changes its mind. In Ohio, the weather changes its mind a lot, Right? This time of year, it was really warm. It's going to get cold again. Some days you may need your umbrella, you may not need your umbrella, but the weather is always changing its mind. But does the weather really have a mind? It doesn't really have a mind, right? Some things it's very easy to change, right? We just had a big garage there with people buying stuff and getting rid of other stuff, right? They're changing stuff all the time. For example, how often have you been to the dentist? Has everyone been to the dentist before? Do they give you one of these when you go to the dentist? Yeah. You get a new toothbrush. What do you do with the old one? You throw it away, you use the new one? No, okay. Keep you keep the old one too? For my sister. You keep the old one for your sister to use. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. All right. So we can change things really easily. We can go to garage sale, we can buy new things, right? And we can um, get new toothbrushes from the dentist. And things around us are always changing, like the weather always changes. But when it comes to big things in life, when it's easy things in life, you can change your mind really easily. Like you can decide, you know what, I think I'll wear my blue shirt today. Where yes. Teeth? Your teeth? They are beautiful teeth. I like your teeth. <laughs> yes, I know. With your toothbrush. Absolutely. So, wh <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> so the weather can change its mind very easily. Right? Or something like that. You could change your mind very easily about something. You could say, I'm going to wear a blue shirt today, and then you decide you're going to wear your red one or something, right? You could change your mind. You could change what you're going to do very easily. But I've learned, okay, I've learned that when it comes to believing in God or not, people have a really hard time changing their minds. Usually either they were raised to believe in God or they weren't. And even as a pastor, I have a hard time convincing people, okay, to believe in God. Do you know what? I believe the greatest blessing we have, okay, I believe the greatest blessing that we have is that we have people who love us and are teaching us all about God, okay? Because not everybody grows up knowing about God and learning about God, okay? So you guys coming here today, do you know that that means that somebody loves you enough that they want you to know about God? They're bringing you here because they want you to know about God and church so you'll grow up to believe. Because not everyone grows up knowing about God. And when you grow up, if you don't know about God, it's harder to kind of change your mind and learn about God and believe in God. Okay? So that's why it's important even when we're your age to begin to learn about God and how God loves us and to believe in God. Okay? So that's what we do. 
That's why we're here, okay? Because it's easy to change your mind about like a toothbrush or something like that, right? You say, oh, I'm going to get a new toothbrush or I'm going to get a new shirt or something like that, right? You can change your mind about things like that. But the, those are little things, right? The big things in life, we kind of become set in our ways of thinking and it's harder to change the way we think, okay? So that's why it's important to tell other people about God and for us from the time that we're little to learn about God and believe in God, okay? All right, let's say a little prayer, everybody. Dear God, thank you for people who love us enough to bring us here so we can learn from the time we're young about you and about your love. Help us to grow up to be people who believe and will tell other people why they should believe in you too because of your great love. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody. You can go back to Children's Church. Um, the, the Sunday school thing, so the kids are still in the back. Um, the older kids are going to be in the kitchen. Uh, the preschoolers will be um, in Mrs. Medved's classroom. Yes, Mrs. Medved's classroom, which is right beside the youth room. Um, the K-1 class will be in Carolyn's classroom, which is by the green door. And um, the third and fourth graders will be in the middle classroom back there. At this time, we share our joys and concerns. If you have a joy and concern, please raise your hand, and one of the ushers will be by with a microphone. Um, I have a great joy and two concerns. Our joy is um, our daughter, Alexis, defended her doctoral dissertation in biomechanics. Dennis and I still can't believe she's our daughter, but she can play the trombone. But she passed that, um, and she'll be receiving her doctorate on May 12th. So we're really thrilled about that. And thank you all for praying for her. Our concerns are we had a new baby. My nephew and his wife had a baby Thursday, and Betsy was released from the hospital yesterday. But baby Patrick had to stay. He's got some kind of infection, so we're waiting on the blood cultures to be back today. And my mom had a biopsy on Friday, and keep her in your prayers. We're more than a little concerned. Thank you. Any more joys or concerns to share this morning? If there are no more joys and concern, please join us in the prayer hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Would you please join with me for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today. Lord God, as we have sung already, we have gathered here together in this place today to worship you, to center ourselves upon you for just a little while, to be in your presence, to be filled by your spirit. But we thank you, Lord, that also in this time, or at any time, we can come to you with the burdens and concerns of our heart, for you are God, for you are love us and go in ways that go beyond our understanding for you provide for us in ways that we'll never fully understand because you have so richly blessed us and Lord we just pause to give you thanks for all the blessings that you give to us so many Lord which we know we'll never begin to fully understand or appreciate but Lord we thank you even for the gift of life for the gift of faith, for the gift of family and friends, for so many things that we know we take for granted. And Lord our God, we gather in this place today to lift up the burdens of our hearts to you. We pray this morning for baby Patrick and Doris and for all those on our prayer request list, for those who we name before you in our hearts. Lord God, we just pray for each person and we pray, Lord, that they would know the power of your healing hand, that they would have the faith to know that you are with them no matter what they face, that they can have comfort and strength provided by your Holy Spirit or by us in some way reaching out to help. And Lord God, I just give you thanks for the many ways that this congregation reaches out to help. So many people helped so much in these past few weeks with the garage sale, Lord, is just one most recent example. People giving so many hours of their time. We don't always fully appreciate, Lord, what a blessing it can be that someone can come here and find clothing that they may not be able to have for children, children who have needs and that they can provide for here, be able to clothe them in ways they might not be able to afford to otherwise. That's besides all the money that's raised, Lord, to be able to do your work, to spread your love in so many ways. So, Lord, we just give you thanks. I give you thanks for the willingness of this congregation to do that in so many ways. Always, Lord, whether it's vacation Bible school or children's ministry or all the different things that we do, so many people are coming together as a family to do your work, and to care for and support each other. And Lord, that's what you have called us to be and how you've called us to live. So Lord, help us continue to continue to live that way and to grow more deeply in that love and that spirit. May continue to fill us. May continue to define how we live our lives so that others might see and know that you're alive because you're alive in us with the way that we live and love and testify to your spirit alive in us. Lord, may all of us working together spread your light in this world. And we pray these things together this morning in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We worship God at this time with the offering of our hearts and our treasures.
Forgiving Father, we faithfully give witness to your work in the world by sharing these gifts and offerings. You shared your son Jesus so that we may repent of our sins and be saved. Thank you for providing us with the example of how to place courageously your call of discipleship into action. We pray that we may live each day according to your holy ways. In the name of the great teacher, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, I apologize this is not in your bulletin this morning. I'm sure I just forgot to tell Debbie, but one of the hymns that was requested recently is Blessed Assurance, which fits in very well with the sermon this morning, as you'll see in a little while. But we're going to join together in singing the hymn Blessed Assurance. I invite you, if you would, please take a moment to pray with me and for me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I have been given tremendous blessings from God in my life, certainly more than I deserve, certainly more than I could ever list or ever even begin to understand. And I often think of Janelle as being the single biggest blessing I've been given. I know you probably think I think it's my hairline or my (laughs) rugged good looks or something like that. But no, I tend to think of it as being Janelle because it is with Janelle that I have my children and most of the things I count precious in my life. The happiness, the joy in my life mostly radiates from my family, but mostly I know that there's someone that loves me, someone I love in return. I have that blessed assurance from a human being, and I know that not everyone has that, and I know that we long for it, and I know how lucky I am to have someone that loves me whom I love in return. It's maybe my greatest blessing, but over the last few months, I've had conversations with several people that have convinced me that's not really true. I'm wrong about that. I've had conversations with people who are able to talk with them essentially because they don't have any faith really whatsoever. A few of them not only have never 
belong to a church. A couple of people told me they've never even been in a church. One of these conversations with someone who almost was mocking what I believe. See, when I think or talk about my blessings, I probably take the single biggest one for granted because I just don't think about it very much. But from the time I was a little one up here like our children every Sunday, I was raised in a church. I was raised by parents who were people of faith. And I had a pastor who was fun and authentic and liked kids and you know, was part of our life as I was growing up. Someone that I could look up to. I think the older I get, the more I treasure what a blessing that is. For most of my life, I probably have just taken it for granted, but the older I get, the more I appreciate it. I think about things like this church garage sale has obviously been dominating our church around here the last few weeks. It's hard to think about much of anything else. And you know the old saying that goes along with the garage sale that one person's junk is another person's treasure? Well, having grown up with faith, have that instilled with me from the time I was little, it's something that I treasure. I treasure it, but I know that to other people, it is just junk. It's just junk to them. Having been raised with faith has helped to define who I am, who I grew up to be, and yet it's just another person's junk. They don't see any value in it at all. If you were here at our church on Easter morning, you heard me preach on the scripture from Easter night rather than Easter morning the story where Jesus appeared to the other disciples without Thomas. And when they told Thomas that they had seen him, Thomas said, look, I just am not going to believe it. Not till I see it with my own eyes. Not till I see it myself. That's another old saying, right? I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. That seems to be the conversation I've had several times in the past few months with people. There's no evidence for God. They can't see God how can you believe in something you cannot see or prove? I'll believe it when I see it. Well, I understand. I understand that mindset. You know, I'll believe in zombies or vampires or my hair coming back one day when I see it, you know? Until then, I probably won't believe in zombies or vampires or my hair growing back. Some things I'll believe when I see it with my own eyes. Otherwise, it's just something in a movie that someone has invented. So it's not like I can't understand the mindset of I'll believe it when I see it. And yet, I try to convince people that it's the exact opposite when it comes to faith. It's the exact opposite. They have developed a mindset in their lives that convinces them there is no God. And it's, I love that word mindset because our mind becomes set to believe one way or one particular way. And that's how many people think their minds are set and isn't likely to change. You heard me preach a whole series about how we can become set in our ways of thinking, but we can still love each other and find ways to compromise together because I know we can become set in how we think. And many people think just like this, they'll believe in God when they see God. But really, the exact opposite is true. First, we believe First we believe, and then we see God. See, I've come to understand the greatest blessing in my life is I was raised with a different mindset. I was raised to believe. I was raised with a different mindset from these people I've been talking with. My mind was ready to believe. It was set to believe. And so here's the thing. I see God. I hear God. I feel God. You understand, I don't see a physical being. I don't hear a literal voice talking to me. But I tell you with certainty that I see God at work in this world. I hear God calling me sometimes, speaking to me sometimes. And I feel God often in my life. I have what that hymn says we just sang, a blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. I have that in my life. And so I try 
to tell people, no, you've got it backwards. You don't see God, and then you believe in God. You believe in God, and then you can see God and hear God and feel God. And the deeper your belief, the more often and the more deeply you see and hear and feel God. Why do I emphasize all the time to people how important it is to bring their kids? Why we put so much effort into our children's ministries and VBS and all those things like that? We talk about kids and youth and young people all the time, I know. Why do we emphasize it so much? Because the greatest blessing that I was ever given is that I was raised to believe. It has defined my morality, my personal character. It defined who I married, what I was looking for in a wife, how I raise my own kids, what gives me hope in this life when times are hardest. I was raised to believe. It's the mindset I was raised with. My mind is set to believe that way. And so when times are hardest, I still believe because my mind is set that way and our troubles are in perspective and my core beliefs define who I am and how I try to live and so it does for so many of us in this room today but I know many people have never even been inside a church today or have really an understanding of what faith is let alone having to be part of their core identity, their mindset that defines who they are and how they live. Instead, they have a mindset not to believe. And to think of God as one more thing like zombies or vampires or my hair coming back, they'll believe it when they see it. That's how they think of God. And once people's minds are set, once this is the mindset that defines who they are and how they live, it's really, really hard to convince them of something that would change their mindset and turn their whole way of thinking upside down, that there is a God who created them and loves them. Much like the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, it's hard to convince someone to believe in God when they haven't been raised with a mindset to believe. That's why we emphasize so much in our church, children's and youth ministries and all that we do in those areas. And that brings me to today's scripture. Just a few verses from the second chapter of Mark. If you can pull it up for me, please, guys. In the tech room up there, thank you. Mark chapter 2. Let me just say that before this happens, Jesus has just called his disciples. They're just answering the call. You know, they're fishermen and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus is calling common, everyday people to be his followers. And he's not teaching them to do the same thing that other people are doing, other disciples of John or Pharisees, religious leaders at the time. Jesus is doing things differently with them. And here's an example. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are, are fasting, but yours are not? And this is what Jesus says in response. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And if you can leave that right there for a second, what does it mean? Well, if you have a garment and you had a hole, if you put a new patch on it, when it got wet, the new material would shrink. It would pull away from the old. It would cause a bigger hole. Go on to the next part, please, guys. And another common example from the time in which they lived, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Wineskins were made out of goat skins. Once the wine had been in them, they'd become set, they'd become rigid. So if that wine was emptied and tried to put new wine into those old wineskins, because they were rigid, they would burst. And that's what Jesus says. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. Now he pours new wine into new wineskins. What's Jesus trying to say here? We'll get to that verse in a minute, guys, from Romans 12. What's Jesus trying to say here? He's trying to say that we can become set, right? I said about our mindsets. We can become set in a way of thinking. And when you try to have something new, like new wine coming in there, it can completely change the situation, cause those wineskins to burst. This is what Jesus is talking about. You have to look past their things about, they're asking questions about fasting. What they're really trying to say is, how do we fit these new things that you're teaching Jesus 
in with our old ways of doing things? How do we fit the new in with the old? And I was thinking about that scripture a lot with the garage sale this past week. How people try to fit the old in with the new. I once knew a married couple who had received a new living room furniture. They went out and bought new living room furniture, and the husband wanted to cover it in plastic in their home. And the wife talked him out of it. But still, when you went to visit them, the husband and the wife would, the husband would show you the new furniture in the living room, and then they would take you down to a family room where you would sit in the old furniture, you know? They wanted to keep the new stuff like it was in a museum, shiny and new. That was his mindset. And we all have different mindsets of fitting the old in with the new. Some people are only comfortable with things after they get the first scratch in them or the first stain in the carpet, something like that, you know? Then they become comfortable with it once it's become a little bit old. That's their mindset. Janelle's grandmother, her father's mother, uh, was raised in the Great Depression on a farm, and she resisted replacing old things with new. I'll always remember that one year for Christmas, Janelle got her dishcloths and dish towels, and she was very proud of this because when we been at her home the last time, she saw that the ones she had were worn and patched. So she thought this would be a great present to give to her grandmother. And when her, her grandmother opened them up, she very kindly thanked her for them. And right away, we saw her. She put them in a drawer that was full of new dishcloths and dish towels. Because <laughs> many people had noticed this and had this great idea. But her mindset was she was raised in the Great Depression, and you don't throw something out as long as it's still useful, you know? My dad had that mindset. My dad could never part with anything. My dad's drill was broken. He got a new one at a garage sale. He wouldn't get rid of the old one even if it didn't work anymore, you know? Some people, that's their mindset. We become set in our ways, and it's hard to fit in new ideas with old. It's hard to compromise sometimes as a country or anything like that, but it's hard to fit in the new with the old, and that's what Jesus is saying when he's saying you don't put new wine and new wine skins. You don't just put a new patch onto old material. That's part of what makes the garage sale so fascinating to me. People, some people are buying lots of stuff. Some people are donating lots of stuff. Some people are doing both. They're donating and then filling up their car as they're leaving, right, with different stuff. Because as we say all the time, one person's treasure is another person's junk. But what Jesus is really saying in this mindset is, we all have a mindset, and it's hard to change it to something new. And that's why the older I get, the more I understand, the more I appreciate of all the blessings from God in my life, the greatest isn't Janelle or anything else that I could praise God for. Even though I married way out of my league, she's not my greatest blessing. The greatest blessing in my life is that I was raised to believe that that was my mindset from the time I was young, that someone loved me enough and loved God enough to instill that in me so that that would be what defined my life and my personal character and the way that I live. I don't need someone to try to plant seeds in my life, to try to change my mind, to try to let God do transformative work in my life the way that God can. Now, of course, I can live my life better. I can grow even as a pastor, I can grow deeper in my faith. So can all of us who are people of faith. I can be changing and growing to be more like Christ. We'll talk about that more next week. But the beginning of that journey is believing. It's not seeing. It's not having evidence. It's believing. It's having faith. And when we believe, when we have faith, then we can see then we can hear, then we can feel God speak to us. And so some people try to believe, and they treat faith like a patch that they can put on their old way of thinking. Okay, I, I've got problems, and I hear this pastor saying to me, maybe if I try to believe, it'll fix my problems, so this is going to patch up my life. What happens is, of course, when life happens, that can shrink their faith and just tear away from their old way of thinking, and the whole is still there. Instead, look at that. Can you put that last verse up for me, guys? Look what the Bible says about this. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, to the way the world thinks, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we are people who don't have faith, 
We have to have our mindset completely changed. The wine has to be poured into those old widened skins and then it has to burst. Our lives have to be transformed. And the wonderful news is that's the power of the gospel. That's the power of the risen Christ for people who don't have faith to have their lives completely transformed. Completely transformed. Their mindsets completely changed to believe there's a God who loves them, who created them who wants them to love them in return, who wants them to give their lives to them. We can have our patterns of thinking completely transformed. God can do anything. God can absolutely change us. And that's why when I talk with people, and I try to have these conversations, of course, as a pastor, as much as I can with people, when I talk with people who minds, whose minds are set another way, and I know they need the complete transformation in their life, it's really of course, so frustrating, so frustrating to not be able to somehow convince them of what I know to be true. And yet, I have to try to just plant seeds. Here's something that I forget sometimes as a pastor. It's not my job to transform people's lives. It's not my job to do what only God can do. If they need a complete mindset change, only God can really change hearts and lives. My job is just to plant seeds that God can grow there. And that's what all of our jobs are. So when you help at a garage sale, that's what you're doing. When you help at Vacation Bible School, that's what you're doing. When you come to worship, when you invite others to come to worship so God can plant seeds. You can invite people to come out to the recreation concert where God can have a chance to speak to them. There are so many ways where all we can try to do is plant seeds and know that God can transform their lives. That's the power of the gospel. I believe in it with all my heart and lives and, and faith. God can change people's lives. But I can't underestimate, which is what I do. I take for granted the simple fact that I was raised to believe, that I was raised with a mindset to believe. And it's the single greatest blessing I've been given, and I believe if that's how you were raised, the single greatest blessing you've been given too. It's what we need to give our kids our grandkids, anybody that we can. It's why we need to plant seeds in the lives of others who are raised with a different mindset, who are raised not to believe. Because if we plant those seeds, when we invite people to come experience God somehow, God can change their minds, their hearts. That's the power of Christ. We're called to plant seeds. I have to remind myself of that sometimes. I don't have to do what God has to do, but I do have to plant seeds, and that's what we all do. That's our mission. That's our purpose. That's why we do the garage sale and vacation Bible school and the children's ministries and everything that we do here as a church family to the glory of God so we can be planting seeds in people's lives so that they can know what we know, so that we can have, so they can have that blessed assurance that we have that Jesus is ours so it can define their lives and who they are and how they live. So this morning, I simply remind you, be grateful if you're a person of faith that someone loved you enough to help instill that faith in you. Be so grateful that you try to allow the people that you love in your life to have that faith instilled in them and be so grateful you try to plant seeds in the lives of other people with what we do here through the church and through your ministries outside this church so we can plant seeds in people's lives so that they too can believe. From the Ground is going to come up right now for a closing song. It's a song that's called Beautiful Things, and it reminds us that there are many people in this world who, when they face the pain of life, when they say, all this pain is my life ever going to change? They don't have the blessed assurance that we have that God is there 
that God has created them, that God will see them through. They don't know that when things happen in our lives that God is just making beautiful things out of us, that God is changing us into something new, changing our mindsets, deepening our faith. But that is what this journey of faith is about. This song is called Beautiful Things. I invite you to please stand and join together if you're able. And think about all those as we sing who don't know the answer to the question that this song answers.
people go through pain in life, they often wonder, what's going on? How can this ever change? Is this what life is supposed to be like? And yet, to me, I know things happen for a reason, that there's a God in charge, that somehow everything that happens in life, God is working on my heart to make something beautiful out of me. God makes beautiful things out of us. I believe it through faith. And then I see it in people's lives. I see how they change. I see how they grow. I see how they become more Christ-like. I see when hard times even make them stronger and closer to God. And I see God making beautiful things. And you understand, I see God. But first, I believe. But first, I believe. And then I see. And I see the beautiful things God is making and the beautiful things God is doing. And so we must believe, and we must be grateful if you do believe for those who have helped you believe, and then we must plant the seeds of belief in others and trust God to make them grow because God makes beautiful things out of people, and what we do is plant seeds. Friends, I know some of you are tired after the last couple of weeks of the garage sale. I know you're tired of all the things that goes around here all the time, all the things that we do. But don't forget the reason why. Because we are planting seeds in people's hearts and lives so that they too might have the blessed assurance that Jesus is theirs. That God is making beautiful things out of them and will one day when this life is over. That's why we do all that we do. Believe, be grateful you believe, and plant seeds in the lives of others. And as you do so, as you leave this place, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now, remain with you forevermore. Amen.